And, and I'm I'm just so thankful to God that He has not left us alone without any form of um, hope. And we did get that hope today. And I, and I want to praise the Lord and thank Him for the riches of His grace. At this moment, I want to just ask that um, you offer a word of prayer as we go through this very important topic that nothing will be misunderstood, that everything will be clear, and that we will leave rejoicing because we have received the, the manna from heaven. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father and our God, we give you thanks and praise that this privilege has been given to us. And many who do not know about our gathering, many are at the brink of losing their souls and losing their lives and giving up. But the privilege has been ours. You've guided us to this place at this time to hear a word that we will need to be able to withstand all the fiery darts of the enemy. And so, mighty God, we ask that you'll wash us thoroughly, that you remove anything that will distract our minds, that you will bind up every devices, every cunning artifact of the enemy. Lord, we ask that you will so move in a special way that will give us the freedom that we need to bask in the light of your presence. Be with this presenter. Anoint him with the power of your Holy Spirit. Be with every hearer that the word of my mouth and the meditation of our heart will be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so, as was mentioned before, we have been doing the book Lessons on Faith. And we're at a pivotal point in this book. Because as was mentioned in the previous chapters, in the previous presentations, that it is the straight testimony that will bring on the persecution. What straight testimony is that? It is not the testimony so much of the Sabbath, as important as it is. It is a testimony that will bend the hearts of men in one or the other direction either towards Christ and him crucified and live in freedom or towards the enemy and live in anguish and anger, as was seen by our Savior. It was not the message of the Sabbath that brought the persecution on him. No, sir. It was a straight testimony when he was able to look them squarely in the, in the face and say, you hypocrite. It was a straight testimony of John the Baptist when he looked at them and said, you children of the devil, you, you, you vipers. It is the straight testimony of the power of God to, to, to which we can live holy lives that will make men and women become angry with us. And so while you're here, it is not by chance I have a testimony to give, and I'm just going to explain that this is by divine working. Last uh, Sunday, um, I went for a walk, and as I was walking, I was you know, talking to the Lord and asking the Lord, Father, I don't want to make decisions for myself or the family that you are not in. So this morning, I want you to give me a, a, um, evidence that you are the one that's directing and you promise that you will direct. I want to talk to somebody online this morning. I mean, this evening. And so as I was walking home, the sun was already very hot. And there are, there are other places that I could walk that, that have shade trees just over the path. However, the Lord directed me to an unshaded area. So it's walk down the street. I was just walking. 
And it's funny that as I walk, then I pass in between two churches and I was just coming around. And as I was coming around, um, I didn't normally take the left. I took the road. He said, take the right. And I took the right. And as I was, I could have gone straight. The Holy said, no, take the left. I mean, take the next right. And I took the next right. And he said, take the left. And I took the left. And as I was just walking, coming up the street, I could walk straight. The Holy Spirit said, take the left. I mean, the next right. And I took the next right. As I came around, I saw a gentleman coming towards me. And you could see in his face this, this uncomfortableness in his eyes. And I said, are you okay? He, he, he said, no, 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 I'm not. I said, what's the matter? He says, I'm dehydrated. And he went to the wall and he leaned up on the wall and looked up. I said to him, okay. He said to me, can you buy me a juice? Now, this is Sunday where I was walking. There's, the, the stores were closed, but, but, but I mean, there's no way to, to get him anything. And he said, there's a, there's a place that's open down there. I, said, I need something to drink. I said, listen, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to go and find a place and sit down and don't move. And I ran towards the, the, the store that he was mentioning, went in. It was not really a store store. It's a restaurant that caters for people who basically come in and you sit. There's just one table in there and they serve. It's a smooth bar. So as I went in, I said to the lady, good morning. I have an emergency. I need you to give me a cup of water, please. I, um, do you have any salt? And I just gave her the in information. I said, listen, I just want you to give me some water and a cup and cover it. And, I, and she did it. And it's okay. Thank you very much. And I walked back out. I gave him. And as I was talking, I said, did you eat anything? He says, no. He just went to visit a friend and he was walking back home. I said, okay, stay right here. I'm going to run home and I'll come back. And as I ran home, I, in our call run, I said, honey, I need your assistance. And, and she gave me, you know, she gave me the help. She, she made a wonderful sandwich, gave grape and X, Y, Z. And I ran back to him with everything. But before I ran, the Holy Spirit said to me, in my mind, he said to me, take the coldest bottle of water, sprinkle some Himalayan salt in it. And so I did, and I shook it, and I ran back out as fast as I could, and I brought it to him. And the moment he saw what was in the bag, I said, listen, in the bag, there's a, um, a small cup of um, apple sauce, there's some grape, um, some apples, um, a nice rye bread sandwich, avocado sandwich, and two bottles of water, and a bottle of juice. And my brothers and sisters, he went straight for the apple sauce. And he just ripped the, the lid off and just went sucking on it. And then he popped the grape out and he was just biting it and he stopped with his eyes bright. And he said, what is this? I said, it's grape. He said, this is different. I said, because it's organic. And he just ate and he ate and he just, I could see him reviving and coming around. And afterwards, I, um, we decided, you know, I said, where do you live? And he told me, but he gave, you know, when you're disoriented, when you, you know, you can't really think straight. So he told me around, I just said, no, don't, don't, don't follow the GPS. Take me to Walmart. And we took him to Walmart and we dropped him off. He said, no, I'm fine here. And then I, 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 um, he called his, he said, may I borrow your phone? I said, yeah, sure. He called his mom and he told his mom what happened. He said, mom, mom says, okay, you stay right there. I'm coming. And while I was there, he was telling me, thank you so much. Thank you. And I prayed with him. And then we left. He called me back to say he was, the following day to say he was doing fine. Let me just say this to you, my brothers and sisters. When God is leading our lives, things will not necessarily look normal. But you and I must never doubt God's leading. We must always, when we are in doubt, when we, we feel like he's not there, ask him. And so today is not by chance you're here because this message is powerful. If you're here this morning, if you're not here this morning, ask for the recording. If you're not here at noon, ask for the recording. Because I want everybody everywhere to get this message. Father, once again, we ask for your leading and your guiding. Please teach us your words so that we will know what you're saying and that we will live our lives to glorify you and only you is our prayer with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. So just to recap, we learned that grace is given to us for the perfecting of the saints. And the objective of it is to bring each and every one to the perfection in Christ Jesus. And the perfection that is fully given to God, uh, by God, to the standard that has been presented to us in His Son, Jesus Christ. You see? The scripture says, till we all come, and if you remember, the, it's from Ephesians. 
chapter 4, verse 13, till we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the message of the, the statue of the fullness of Christ. You see, it is given to every man. If you're here this morning and this afternoon, you'll, you'd have learned this. It is given to every one of us till we all come to perfection, even by the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. Again, this grace is given to everyone where sin abound and it brings salvation to everyone to whom it is giving. So we learn that as boundless grace is given to everyone, bringing salvation to the extent of its own full measure, then if anyone does not have boundless salvation, whose fault it is? Where does the blame lie? Plainly, it can be only said that those who have, who have spurned the grace of God now will not live by the grace of God. We learned this morning that the grace of God is given for us to overcome sin. If you don't believe me, let me share this with you. In Romans chapter 5, verse 20, it says, and I've heard this being used a lot of time out of context. There are people who say, eh, you see, you can't sin. I, I, I tell you why. And they read this text. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abound, grace did much more abound. And what does the word abound mean? It means that regardless of what sin you and I commit, when we ask God to take our lives and let it be consecrated God to him, he comes in and gives us the power to live a life free from sin and to live a life overcoming sin. Satan, the flesh, and the world. Now, as boundless grace is given to everyone and bringing salvation, as was mentioned before, we need to make sure that whatever we do as Christians, whatever we are attempting, that we are leaning on the wonderful and powerful arm of Jesus. When you read Romans chapter 9 and 10, you realize the mistake the children of Israel made. I and mean, that's another study for another time. So as boundless grace is given to everyone in order that it shall reign in him against all the power of sin as certainly as even sin reigned and in order that sin shall not have dominion then if sin still reigns in anyone if sin yet has dominion over anyone where lies the fault if we are still slaves to sin who shall we blame clearly it lies only in this, that he will not allow, the person will not allow the grace to do for him or her, and in him or her, that which it is given to do. And we learned that this morning and this afternoon. So, to every believer, by his very profession, says that he has received the grace of God. Did you hear this? Every believer, by his or her profession, says that he or she has received the grace of God. Now, if the believer's um, grace, or if grace does not reign in the believer's heart, right? Instead of sin. If grace does not have dominion Instead of sin, it is plain enough that he or she is receiving the grace of God in vain. Remember, it is known fact. People are lost not because Jesus Christ's sacrifice is not efficacious, big word, is not powerful, potent enough. It is because of, as we learned this morning again, and I keep going back to this morning and this afternoon, because I want you to, to understand that it was dealt with wonderfully um, today, is because of unbelief in our lives. 
if grace is not bringing the believers on the believer onward towards a perfect man in the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, then he is receiving the grace of God in vain. In other words, when the Bible says that we should not take the name of the Lord in vain, it means we should not use it flippantly or hypocritically. You see, this, this commandment is also linked to this. Because when we say we are true Christian, we won't take the name of the Lord in vain. Our lives will testify. Now, let me just say this, by the way. There are many people who say, oh, if you were Christ, you'd, have, you'd do this. If, if you were like Christ, you'd love everybody. You'd do X, Y, Z. Let me just say this to you. I want to just say this to you. True. But love in the eyes of man is totally different from love in the eyes of God. Godly love is different from human love. And we ought to be very careful that we don't, we don't mix them up. Because you will find yourself getting into a situation where you, 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 you engage into habits or things that are not godly. Because you're trying to say that you're trying to be unto all men. What Christ, um, what you believe Christ is saying that you should be. So you stoop, you become like a person who is doing something that you know is wrong. You 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 entertain the company. And remember, the psalmist says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the ways of sinners, nor sit in the presence of the scornful. Now, we must be very careful as Christians. When grace is working in our lives, Christ is the operating power that gives us the insight, the wisdom, the direction we need to live holy life. It's no longer me. It's no longer you. It's the Spirit of the Lord that brings in Christ in us. And so as Christ was aboard. As Christ was rejected, you will be aboard. You will be rejected. But stand firm because God has called his children out of darkness into this marvelous light. Not all men will love you. They did not love Jesus. His own brothers, he came unto his own and his own received him not. And so why is it any surprise that you'll be treated the way you'll be treated? Stand firm and the principles that with Jesus Christ has called us to stand from, regardless of what men say and do. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more. So the grace of God is fully able to accomplish that for which it is given, if only if it is allowed to work. We have seen that grace bring and being all together from God has the power has the power to do remarkable things in our lives. It is plain enough, therefore, that the power of God is abundantly able to accomplish all of which it is given. The salvation of the soul, deliverance from sin, and from the power of it, the reign of righteousness in the life, and the reflecting of the believer upon the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, if only it can have place in the heart and in the life to work according to the will of God. When we allow God's grace to work in our lives, we will experience the things that the Apostle Paul talks about, the Apostle Peter wrote about, and all these Bible writers spoke about. You see, Living holy is not a, an, an old-fashioned thing. Living holy is a God-given thing. It is based on the grace of God that's working in our lives. But the power of God is unto salvation to everyone that believes. Unbelief frustrates the grace of God. I repeat, unbelief frustrates the grace of God. Why many people will be lost? Because of doubt, because of unbelief. And if you don't believe me, read Hebrews chapter 4. It talks about the children of Israel, how they did not enter into God's rest because they never believed. You see, 
Mm. I don't want to go into, I'm doing a, a study right now, but it, it's, it's a little lengthy, but let me just give you the gist of it. Israel sought a relationship with God by thinking to themselves that they can appease God by obeying his law. Romans chapter 9, 10, and 11. The child of God who is not living for God and living in a covenantal relationship with God may end up doing the things that in the eyes of him or herself and the eyes of others are worthy of commendation. But in God's eyes is a reproach. Why? Because what God honors is a plain love for him, is the relationship that we, 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 we establish and that we keep going with him that matters the most. And so when God, when you read the, the book of, of Romans, Paul says, God says, based on the, the text in Isaiah, Chapter 52, I'm going to go to the Gentiles, to people who do not know me. I'm going to be known by those who know me. And they are going to accept me. You know, when you think about the Magi's, or my brothers and sisters, they were Gentiles. But they loved God so much. The Bible says they searched. And when you do the backstory, it took them years but because of their diligent search, their love for God, they wanted to know yeah. God because they needed the, to, that, 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 that relationship with God. And come, he come right there. He come right, right there. By the door. I see his head right there. Right there, I see his head. So when you see that, you know there are people today who may not necessarily look based on what we see that they are, they are, are walking in, 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 the, in the victory of Christ. But I let you know, that is why we are told there are going to be many surprises in heaven. First one is going to be, you're going to be surprised you're there. The next one is going to be a surprise that um, such and such is there. And then the last surprise is that you're going to see people you thought would be there and should be there that are not there. And then you're going to, the Lord's going to say, the records are there. Let's move on. So we learn that unbelief frustrates the grace of God. You see, many believers receive the grace of God for salvation from sin that are past. And that's where it stops. But when it comes on to things that are before, that foible, that besetting sin? Oh, we tend to believe that there's no power that we might overcome and say no. But I, 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 I share with you this evening that when we trust God, and as was mentioned before, and believe in God, all things are possible. So, we, we are taught in Second Corinthians chapter six, verse two. First, six, Second Corinthians chapter six, verse two. For he said, "I have been, I have heard thee in a time acceptable, and in the day of salvation I have succored thee. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Giving no offense to anything, that the ministry be not blamed." See, Paul is saying here, he does not want anyone to receive the grace of God in vain, lest that grace and its blessed working be misrepresented to the world, and so men be further hindered from yielding to it. You know, this has been an issue with, with me. And I'm going to be honest with you, this is one of the reasons I beg God every day to help me to walk circumspect. When I was growing up, my father was not uh, an Adventist. 
it was difficult to minister to my own father. My mother and, and, and all of us, we would go to church market. You would never be able to stay home on Sabbath. If he came home and find you home on Sabbath, the first thing he's going to ask you, what are you doing here? When he came home, the house was normally empty. He would not bring in unclean meats and foods in the house. He respected his home and those who believe in him. What a, an awesome man he is. He's still alive, by the way. And a couple of years ago, he gave his heart to Jesus. But one of the struggles he had was that he would say, listen to me, I'm not coming to sit in church among those hypocrites. And when I was grown enough, a young man, I sat him down at the table once and I said, one evening, and I, one of those lamps, um, light bulbs that's on the side of the wall, I, you know, we were facing it. I said, Dad, give me a watch. I, I don't know where this analogy, it was the Holy Spirit that gave it to me. Straight up, I, I'm not that brilliant. And there was a, a bottle, an opaque bottle that the light couldn't go through. And I, and I remember, I said, Dad, give me a watch. And I placed the bottle and I created a shadow. And I took his watch and I placed it there. I said, Dad, that's the light represents Christ. I said, Dad, the light represents Christ. The bottle, the opaque bottle that the light can't shine through represents the hypocrites that are sitting amongst the church, the pew, in the church pews. Because he knew so many things that people are doing in the community who claim to be people who, who, who would have offices in church. And then I laid, laid the watch and said, Dad, you notice something? In fact, I, I, we, we have an endearing name for him. We call him Dada. I said, Dada, look. There is your watch. And see the light. You are worse than the hypocrites. The light is shining directly on the hypocrite, which means that light one day can penetrate the heart of the hypocrite. And he can change, but you, on the other hand, I know we are near the light. I said, what you need to do is cut. And I took the watch, and I pushed away the, the opaque, and I put the watch before. I said, that's what you need. You need to come in and come and let the light shine on you so that the hypocrite can see how you live your life. Now, he wasn't pleased with that analogy because it went straight to the heart. And let me just say this to you, my brothers and sisters. I've come a long way. God has removed that quick spirit from me. Because I've not, I've been in situations where people want to fight me because I had a, a quick word. It was stabbing. These days I say nothing. He was upset, but it went straight to his heart. And a couple of years ago, probably over 10 years ago, he gave his heart to Christ. To God be the glory. So there are people who will not come in because they see how the the, the, how people live their lives and so they are hindrances and so I pray every day Lord help me not to be so Paul says he does not want his grace to be received in vain because when it is an offense it hinders the ministry of grace to the degree that people blame yet when grace of God is not received in vain, but is given the place that belongs to it. No offense will be given in anything. And the ministry will not only be not blamed, but the ministry will be blessed. You know, one of the issues I find is that as human beings, we like to blame. I remember a couple of years ago, I had to talk to a brother who found himself in, in a situation. And it's a brother who I know knew better. And I said to them, my brother, why? And the first thing my brother said was, I felt like David. And I said to myself, Lord have mercy. You know how many people use David's situation and excuse when speaking about situations like that, but how few are willing to repent like David. So it is 
many will not be seeing the face of God because they did not repent like David. Oh, so many people do the very thing Samson did and look at Samson and think for themselves, listen, I'm going to get away, but did not have time to repent as Samson repent. There is a danger, my brothers and sisters, when we decide in our minds that we will gamble with our soul salvation, that we will make this message of grace of none effect by the way we speak and act. And so, as I come to a close, a close, when grace is reigning in our hearts, it will be evident in our lives. Others might not um, notice it, but we have not call, been called to be men pleasers. When grace is in our lives, when grace is working in our lives, we will be approved unto God. And so, in all things, we will always approve ourselves unto God. When grace is working in our lives, it will be seen in our much patience. When grace is working, it will be evident in our affliction, in our necessities, in our distresses. When men stripe us, whether it be physically or with their tongue, grace will be evident in our imprisonments, in our tumults, when things are breaking, um, when all hell is breaking loose, grace will be seen working in us to will and to do God's good pleasure. In our labors, in our watchings, in our fasting, by pureness, by our knowledge, by our long-suffering, by our kindness, by the Holy Ghost in us, by love unfeigned. And that is something that oftentimes is missing. Many people say they love and they do things, but what people don't realize, many people do it for, 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 um, for, for, for things in return, for ulterior motive. And the moment you stand up for Jesus Christ is the moment they go across to tell everybody what they did. Let me tell you something. When grace is working in your heart and my heart, our love will be unfeigned. The words that we speak will be words of truth. The power of God will be evident in our life. The armor of righteousness will be on our right hand and our left. We will honor God. And even in our honor and in our dishonor, the grace of God will be evident. Even when in evil report or in good report, even when people say um, we're, um, we're, we're this or we're that, yet we will hold firm. When we, even the unknown and even in the known, even when we're chastened, even when we are faced with sorrow, yet we will always rejoice as poor, yet making every man rich, as having nothing because of the grace of God working in us, possessing all things. And so my brothers and sisters, we then, as workers together with him, we beseech you, by the mercies of God, that you also receive not the grace of God in vain, but in fully, in full measure for his working to do the work of preparation, the work of healing, the work of restoration, 
so that when we shall face Christ, we'll not be running to the rocks and mountains saying, following us, but we will with open arms say, this is our God. We have waited for. May God richly bless us as we meditate, as we contemplate, as we cogitate on these words. Father God, we thank you this evening for the ministry of the working of your Holy Spirit and for the grace that you have afforded us through the merits of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by his death, burial, resurrection, and his ascension. We ask that from this day forward, we leave off the complaining. We leave off the men pleasing. We leave off the old man and we'll allow you to do the work of regeneration in our lives, the work of conversion in our lives, in the lives of our spouse, in the lives of our children. Oh God, thank you so much for this message. Approve your message now by turning the hearts of men to you is our prayer with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.